Are you are muted. I was, I apologize about my be, being late. I just pulled up in the driveway. Um, so welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, Donna. Donna's like, are you coming? I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so everyone is here. So I, I'm assuming that people had the opportunity to informally or formally check in. Um, however, um, we wanted to be able to, did you guys have an opportunity to check in? So we all said hello. We were missing Barbara and Damon. Okay, very good. We have a, 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 a very girthy book of business today. So we want to get right to it. I believe the last time we formally met was back in January. And so we just want to make sure that um, we stay on, on target with all of our demands. Um, and so um just quickly 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 a minute and a, uh, if, if we could just take a minute before we kind of start our meeting today um if we could just say what our expectation is for this meeting um i and i will start and model that today um my expectation is i walk away with some significant task um for accomplishment for the committee um, in the next six weeks. So that is what I would walk away with, some projection of a task that I need to complete on behalf of the committee within the next six weeks. And I'm going to popcorn or um, ask the next person to talk about their expectation. So Donna, your expectation for the- So meeting? my expectation and my hope is that we come to agreement on some critical items related to the um, uh, the Bloomfield Mosaic project, including um, a, a final authorization of our, from our view of the MOU and uh, also um, agreement around our next steps. Outstanding, outstanding. And can you call on the next person? David Runes is right next to me. <laughs> I'm eager to find out how we're going to follow up on our uh, Black history project that had to be postponed. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And um, David, can you call out the next person? Steven? <laughs> Yes, uh, just to echo David, I'm interested in um, bringing some sort of expedition to um, Black History Month celebration, whether we do it with Juneteenth or do something separate um, before Juneteenth, um, that would be great. And I was hoping Barbara would be on the call today too, but I can certainly contact her throughout the week, but some sort of resolution on not dropping that um, carrying it forward, recognizing it and celebrating Black History Month in sometime in spring. And that's okay to do. Outstanding. And can you ask someone, uh, Steve? Uh, Brian Wolf, please. Yeah, I mean, I my uh, you know, being the being your your new staff liaison, um, what I hope to get out of this call is a better understanding of um what it is that uh uh, that this committee does and and how uh, I can assist you um, as a employee of the town of Bloomfield. Outstanding. And can you call on someone, Brian? Sure, Lorraine. I knew by process of elimination, I was up. <laughs> my, ex <laughs> <laughs> uh, my expectation, I really would love to get uh, correct some understanding of how we're going to proceed forward and probably have a full understanding of our thoughts whether it be to combine Black history or um, separate it from Juneteenth um, and kind of get some clarity about the next steps with the Mosaic Project and saving the best for last, Tali. <laughs> Thank you. Whoops, let me see. Okay, here we go. Um, and hi, everybody. I just have myself, I, because I'm still recovering from back surgery, um, I'm just stopping my video, but I'm here with this picture. Um, I'm really looking forward to also about Black History Month, I, I would love to help to make something happen. And I also am really curious to finally understand the timeline of the Mosaic Project um, looking forward so that I can be clear about that. Um, and also 
just really happy to be here at the meeting to get to know you all. I've known Donna for a while and um, I've met a couple of you at other things. And David, I know we were at a class together, but it's really great to see everybody here. And Brian, I'm really glad that you're going to be working with us. Thank you. Okay. And Tally, do you want to call on the last person? Is there another person? What well, you, there I... is. Um, she may not think she is, but she <laughs> is. She has opinions and kind of, she's an ad hoc, even though she's <laughs> in a roles, but oh Lynn, she Lynn feel her Lynn. heart. <laughs> of course. I call hi Lynn. Hi. So my um hope is a little different. I'm hoping I forgot to put it on the agenda, but I'm hoping that the minutes from the February meeting can be reviewed and um, hopefully approved. Very good, very good. So I and um, thank you. So that is everyone. So um, um, Lynn, no fault of yours, all the fault of mine because I did not put that on the. Um, agenda that I forwarded to you. I forwarded an agenda to you, correct? Mm -hmm, you did. Because I yep. can't find it. So that that's my error. So um so just to make sure this meeting um um time is from what time to what time? Um six to seven thirty. <laughs> okay, very good. So we have a, a hefty book of business to do. So I will suggest to you that um in 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 uh, our debrief and review with myself and Donna, we really wanted to be able to give Donna a good opportunity to go through the Bloomfield Mosaic because if, if you read the, um, the chronicles that she has um, drafted to keep us abreast of all the work that has happened behind the scenes, she wants to be able to really kind of talk that out. We really have some um, some executive decisions that we need to make, whether we make it on this level or requires another higher level of authorization or what, we really wanna be able to kind of sync that up because we are collaborating with the organization who was moving very quickly. And Donna is a strong advocate to say, you know what, we're not gonna lose our role in our, our leadership position. So she really wants to be equipped to be able to go as the, um, project manager and also the 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 lead for this um to whs and so i'm hoping that we can afford her that good opportunity to kind of debrief everything about the bloomfield mosaic also we really want to just from your commentaries today definitely have an afford enough time for us to really kind of decide what we're going to do with that um project that we were doing for black history month where we should execute it and when we should execute it um, and then um, would want to be able to um, kind of jump down to marketing um, to start a conversation about marketing because in our conversations with last, oh, I bit my tongue, with my conversations with Donna last night as it relates to this wonderful movement that's going on behind the scenes or the work, not behind the scenes, because we all know the work that's being done with the mosaic. We're thinking it's time to let the greater public who is not in the know, but needs to know that this is going on, a marketing scheme for that, as well as probably um, some marketing about what we do. Like you said, Brian, what does the Bloomfield Humanities um, Committee really do? Um, and then, um, but before we all do that, wanna be able to take, probably about seven to 10 minutes to be able to have Brian basically give us a brief, um, a brief um, over, overview of his role and this new um, administrative initiative called the Civic Clerk. Um, and then after that, um, if people are prepared to review and vote on the minutes, we can do that. Um, so Brian. All right, well, thank you. Um, happy to be here with you guys. Um, I know I, I've met met a few of you. Um, I know I, I've met, I actually had a meeting with Donna um, at the uh, end of 2022. Um, my, again, my name is Brian Wolf. Um, I joined uh, the town of Bloomfield uh, at the beginning of November, uh, working under Neil Rogers in the Department of Strategic Communications and Government Affairs, where I also work with Lynn. Um, my actual title is community engagement and public relations specialist. So, you know, within that title, um, I've really thought that this group was 
um, really the perfect group for me to kind of get my feet wet as it relates to being a staff liaison uh, to a board and commission. Um, as some of you are aware, our office oversees all 38 boards and commissions, and India has her foot in almost all of them. So I wanted to try and at least kind of get her <laughs> removed from at least one of them a little bit. Um, and I think this is a really good opportunity for me to um, to uh, to work with the public, um, to work with the, the neighbors of the town of Bloomfield um, and celebrate the uh, the past, the present, the future um, of the town. Uh, I've worked in communications and public relations for the last 17 years. Uh, before this, I worked in college athletics in Buffalo, New York. Um, but as part of what I did in college athletics, a lot of that too was was celebrating uh, the past. You know, we we always show you know this date in history. We always showcase what what um, you know old players were doing. So I I have a a, a really um, large appreciation for for history, um, and you know I, I think sometimes it goes uh, it goes unnoticed um, or uh, you know people just kind of forget about it. But uh, that's it's it's very important that we don't forget about the history of where we came from, um, how how the town of Bloomfield um, came to be the way it is today. So uh, I just really want to to assist you guys uh, in any way I can, um, fight for you guys any way I can to make sure that, um, that the town is doing their part. Uh, and then, uh, you know, making sure that we're staying on track, making sure that we are, are executing. Um, you know, we talk about these initiatives, um, Black History Month, um, Holocaust Remembrance, Pride. Um, I know I'm forgetting a uh, Juneteenth. I know I'm forgetting a couple, um, but you know these these are all really important. And um, you know, as a town, we want to celebrate all of them, but we we can't do it without the help of of the community. Um, and you know, I, I'm I'm so appreciative of of, of all of you guys because um, you know this is this is out of the goodness of your heart. It's because you love love the town. So. Um, I'm just excited, I'm excited to help out, answer any questions I can. I'm sure there'll be some stuff that I won't be able to answer on day one, but Lynn probably can answer it for me. And if not, I could always get it from India. Um, but I'm just, uh, I'm ready to go um, and I'm, I'm excited. Uh, as it relates to um, Civic Clerk, as you mentioned, um, one of the things that we're doing in our office is we are totally revamping our website, which is, uh, it's a much needed, um, it's a much needed uh, revamp. And it's uh, it's going to take a little bit. Um, we're, we're making a progress on the back end, um, but one of those things that we're doing is we're um, we're also going to kind of try and uh, put some uniformity towards our um, agendas and minutes. So we're gonna we um, started a um, contract with Civic Clerk. It's an agenda meetings management system. Uh, I think some of you might have seen the the um, the presentation. I believe it was two weeks ago. Uh, actually. Um, Lynn and I are uh, in the back in the back of things just kind of we are actually using Civic Clerk for tonight's meeting um, just to kind of see if we can work out any kinks, see how it's beneficial for her and I. Uh, and then we can kind of her and I will debrief on that. Um, but we're happy to, to, to show it off um, to you guys. I think it'll it'll really help with um, with with putting our agendas together, making sure that we have all of our documents in our agenda so we can have agendas. And then we can also have our agenda packets. Um, and then we'll have different portals for the board will have its own portal where they can take notes. The public will have a portal where they can kind of see all the, the meanings and minutes. It's, you know, right now on our current site, you have to go to every single board and commission to, to get to get the, the agenda and the minutes. What this is gonna do is it's gonna be one a one-stop shop and, and every every meeting will have its agendas and minutes right there. So uh, I, I'm, I'm excited for it, I, I think. I think the public will really enjoy what they see. So that's kind of uh, that's that's kind of everything in a nutshell. I'd be happy to answer any questions, um, or if not, you know, we can go through the meeting and and happy to chime in wherever I can. Thank you, Brian. So, any questions, good people? Um, this is Tali. I just wanted to say I'm so excited about the website because it's been a real struggle over 15 years. <laughs> so that's really great. I think we'll bring a lot of more community engagement into events in town if you know it's really becomes something that is easier to get around. So kudos, thank you so much. Yes, and it's our goal to uh, make sure that, you know, there's a lot of different audiences in, in Bloomfield, a lot of different demographics um, and everybody uh, ingests information differently. 
Um, and it's it's very important to us that we make sure that everybody can get the information uh, in a way that's that's comfortable and easy to understand for them. Wonderful, wonderful, Brian. I now let for my own clarity. Um, so, Brian, you are our staff liaison. You are our community engagement and public relations specialist, and you are our staff liaison to Correct. that. And and so, Lynn, will you? Are you still our recording secretary, or will your phase, will your role phase out? No, that's a good question. So I'll be here for agendas, minutes, anything nitty gritty. Um, if you're ever not sure if I'm the person to contact or Brian is, you can always contact both of us because we work so closely together. Um, but I'll be more the administrative behind the scenes piece. Very good. Um, and is it possible because everyone knows that we have, no one has time, or maybe it's just me, to meet. Um, is it time, is it possible that we could project a day sometime? I know Civic Clerk, I understand is going live in April. Is it possible that while we're on the phone now, can we just project a time? Would you all be able to um, help us with a little um, hands-on um, training for anyone who wanted to come in? I know we, I went through the, um, the, the web-based training um, and um, I mean, the, the live training, I just sent it to Donna last night, but um, just as it relates to kind of going through it live, is it possible we could set a time that we can maybe tap in for support for that? Yes. So I would say um, we're probably a little bit behind schedule just with budgets okay. um, actually getting this launched because um, we still do have to get um, all of our, all the, all the the boards and commission members and and our staff liaisons, um, usernames and passwords. Um, so we're a little we're a little bit behind, um, but I, I don't not not too far. So we can do one of two things. Uh, I am totally open to um, doing a special session um, where we where we talk about it. Um, I'm also open to if if you guys want to wait um, at the at part of the April meeting, um, just taking. 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes um, of the April meeting that we can do that as well. Um, it's totally up to you guys. Um, you know, you, you you guys let me, it's your time. Um, I, I can make time for it. So you guys let me know what, what is beneficial for you. But uh, I have absolutely no problem walking you through it um, from, from our standpoint and answering any questions. Okay, so maybe we'll just table that more so for the end of the meeting. Um, I'm, I think that my thoughts would be, Druthers, would be for us to have a special meeting um, because I know April and the, the, hopefully the continuation of the um, Bloomfield Mosaic will probably need the girth of that meeting to speak about that as well as this June event. So maybe we can um, hold this to the end of the meeting. Um, Another question I have before we get into the Bloomfield Mosaic Project, um, budgets. I know that we spent time, a quick time, really quick, and we, everyone knows Bloom, town manager did a great job of executing the budget workshops for this week, and I think the last one is tomorrow. Um, how are, how does, how is it falling out for these committees to have budgets? And, um, specifically our our committee um as i had spoken to donna um yesterday um in my experience with our committee we generally had and and um forgive my terminology I, i'm making it up but we generally had a de departmental sponsorship whereas anything that we wanted to execute would really go under the department that was really overseeing our functionality um, and I kind of by default was thinking that was the community engagement uh, department, but wanted to know how does that budget look? Because as we um, move forward in trying to host, we, we don't want to be a labor intensive organization, but as we identify these five focused events, um, even Black History Month, as you know, um, Director Rogers was really, you know, tapping into her budget. But is that a question you could answer today, or give yep. us some foreshadowment, or and or? We can... Well, I can't, I can't foreshadow what the council's going, the council's going to do. But sure. uh, I can, I can tell you um, what what we presented 
um, and was approved by the town manager for the town manager's proposed budget. Um, we uh, we we had the town we got the town manager to agree to to make a budget for the Bloomfield Humanities um, Committee. Um, we put an initial the initial ask was for uh, four thousand two hundred and fifty dollars um, to help with uh, some funding for for your events. Obviously, you know we know that there's going to be other costs, and, and and we can talk about that, but. Um, we did ask for forty for forty two hundred and fifty dollars um, for an initial Bloomfield Humanities budget um, that was approved by the town manager. Um, India and I presented all presented our budgets to the council uh, the first night, which was uh, March sixteenth, and now it's up to the council to deliberate. And uh, the deliberations begin on Thursday. Um, there is a public hearing on Thursday as well. If it's something that that you guys are passionate in talking about. Um, that's that's your your right as residents to to go and talk about it, um, but it it is it, it is it was in our in our in our mind and in the town manager's mind to get some money in there, and now we're kind of at the the mercy of the council, but uh, you know hopefully they understand the value um, of those funds. All right, thank you so much. Yep. Any other questions for Brian that might be um, asked today? I had some questions, but I, I'll wait on them until we get the demonstration. So um, that would be, they can be tabled for now. Okay, okay great. Um, one other question, I mean, one other ask before we move into the, the, the mosaic um, and the new member handbook, we will table that also um, just to make sure that Donna, you have enough time to talk about the mosaic. Lynn, I'm, I'm going to catch you off guard, um, and if and I didn't ask you in advance, so if you can't do it, um, that's fine. Is it possible you can just uh, screen share and show us our site really oh, quickly? Sure. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Is it coming through okay? It is. I can make it bigger. Is this what you're hoping for, Meredith? Yep. Okay. And so news and announcements, um, do the, is that those flyers go and things go through here. Um, Will this change once the new, so this is gonna go into some somewhere else, launch somewhere else, is that what I'm understanding? Yes, when we, we right now, right now with, with just the specific clerk, nothing's changing from our website standpoint. Um, as we launch our new website, um, all of this will be updated and will look way nicer and will be way more functionable. Um, but all the all the content all the content will will stay the same. Um, it'll it'll look nicer um, and it will be easier to to maintain. So you know I want to make sure that that the content is relevant. Um, the website's kind of my is kind of my baby. So um, you know I'm I'm on it every day. So is Lynn. So you guys have actually two really good um, two really good people to, to make sure your information is is most up to date. Um, but this will look will look quite different. Um, come the launch of of the new site. Okay, so and one other thought process: Are these um, items that are on here, like Bloomfield Humanities, um, like to the left, the Bloomfield mm -hmm. Humanities Committee charge described to notices of Bloomfield View Pass, Bloomfield meetings and initiatives? Are those hard tabulations, or can you add? those can you add on to those tabulations i can i can add i can subtract i can do anything you would like to that side okay very good thank you so much um and yep. donna just wanted to help us to see that because i was thinking that um and lynn can you just hit on black history month is black history is more than just a month just how okay so you guys see just wanted to, for those of us who are not, you know, savvy or don't even have time to go on these sites, just to let you know where our information goes and how it is um, 
exposed to the public. Thank you so much, Lynn, for sharing. Um, Donna, as it, as it relates to this site and us going live to another website and thinking about um, some, of, some of our ask and how we're unveiling the mosaic, I was thinking that maybe we could have some type of um, public editorial or public in inquiry um, tab for the communities, um, Bloomfield Humanities Committee. Um, and so, um, then thank you. You can stop the, the screen share. Um, I'm sorry, a public inquiry for the Humanities Committee? Say yes, so if, if people were wanted to see more of whatever and or with the project, if people wanted to say, this, say um, if, if the general public thought that there was little Susie that lives in 27 Mayfair Court and nobody, none of us were aware of her, but she's 102 years old and she lives on Mayfair Court, but- Okay, you know, so, um, so yep, yeah. additional people to recommend for the most, for the right. oral history, okay. But I'm um, just, you know, just basically so that we can engage the public, we want to hear from you type of tab. Um, so um, that's some thought process. So as we, as I say that, and we know that we have that option available, let's think about it, but it's all you, Donna. And again, I just want to applaud um, everybody who has been so instrumental in the Bloomfield Mosaic as well as instrumental in the Black History Month program. I think that we were gonna have a great program. Um, it was kind of, I was nervous, but we had some um, participation and we were kind of have some great food. But um, so thank both of you all, both of the committees who worked um, tirelessly for both, both of those projects, specifically you, Donna, um, you work tire tirelessly for this project, and I think it's going to be a nice burst of sunshine for Bloomfield. So give us what you've been doing. Well, we hope it will be, um, and that's kind of part of the goal. Um, so I'll, I'll do uh, kind of split this up into three parts, um, just give you an update of what happened up until this point. Then we'll talk about the memo of understanding so we can get sign off on that. Um, and then um, we'll talk about next steps. So in terms of update, um, in January, there were two training sessions. Uh, first of all, to back up for information for Brian, I'm not sure that you're aware of this, but we have been partnering with Wittenberry Historical Society. They had reached out individually to um, uh, to Dr. Vernal, and we wanted to be sure that we continue to be a major player in um, the oral history project. And so very early on, we did um, sorted out roles and responsibilities, and they were going to be responsible from a high level of, uh, they're responsible for the, or the uh, oral histories, and we are responsible in addition to participating in all that, we would take major responsibility for any kind of public exhibition um, and also project management. Um, so that's been moving along. We have had two training sessions in um, January that were determined to be not effective enough. We had another session um, where it was very specific. A number of people on the Wittenberg Historical Society side were able to participate in all of that. And we were, we had fewer folks on our, on our side, but we will catch up on that um, soon. We were able to do, I think, David, do you remember from the list? We have, we identified a number of people that we call narrators, who are the people who will be telling their stories. And we have interviewers, which are the um, members of a Wittenberg Historical Society and our committee and some people that we invited to be um, involved in it as well. Um, we identified through those groups about 30 narrators, so 30 people who we thought would give us a good basis, basic beginning, um, not the only people we'll interview, but a good way of getting started. 
And we also have focused this project on three very important communities within our town, um, which not only have interesting um, stories for how they got here, but also have shaped the complexity of the town. Um, complexity as in complexion, not as in anything negative there, because we're all you know, very excited about the blending and the separateness, which is what mosaics really are all about. Um, so that would be the Jewish American community, the African American community, and um, a Caribbean American or West Indian community. Um, and so within the 30 names that we identified, there is a, a mixture of those folks. Um, we had more than 30 names initially. Some of those people were uh, what we determined we should be calling office holders. They may not necessarily have believed themselves to be necessarily political players, but if they um, were had held an office, we kind of moved those over to the side and said that we needed a larger group conversation about how we wanted to address those folks. Some of that was because of the dynamics in the town currently. We really wanted this to be more of a clean kind of process um, that didn't look as, as though it were um, aligning with you know, any folks either past or present. Um, and, and we again, we really were looking at a way to get started. So um, last Friday and Saturday, we did what was called a kickoff. And that was an opportunity for people who had gone through all of the required training to meet with their first narrator. So each interviewer only narrated, uh, only interviewed one person during this kickoff. The reason was we had uh, Dr. Vernal and her grad student available to us to make sure if there were any issues with equipment, we had any questions, any of that, they could answer questions immediately right at the moment. They had all the forms ready for us. They have what they're calling kits, which had the scripts and all of that. We were uh, involved and engaged all the way through in the creation of those scripts, in identifying what we thought were important questions to be asked, uh, things about Bloomfield, et cetera. And um, particularly on the Wittenberry Historical Society side, we've had um, a, you know, just a tremendous amount of input and Dr. Vernal has accepted all of it um, pretty well. Um, David, do you, do you, I'm calling on you because I don't have in front of me, I think we might've had 11 or 12 or 13 around that number of people that went through the two days. Do you have, do you have any memory of that? Oh, yeah, I think all the time slots were filled and some people <laughs> stayed the yep. whole hour and a half. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Okay, so I think we we interviewed somewhere between 11 and 16 people. Um, the next steps for those interviews are that, and, and this will be the case for any, is that um, uh, Dr. Vernal and her, uh, I'm just going to call her Fiona, because she tells us to call her that, so. So Fiona and her grad student were taking uh, the equipment back to Yukon where uh, the oral histories would be transcribed in an automated way. And then she'll be using students, either grad students or regular students to do some editing, light editing, which means that they um, will listen to the recording and look at the transcription and kind of make it right. And then after that, the information goes back to the narrator and the interviewer for final um, approval. Finally, after that, it goes into the Connecticut Digital Archive and Wittenberry Historical Society has uh, a copy of it as well um, as a digital copy. Uh, it is public. Anyone can get to it at any time. Um, the memo of understanding has uh, a lot of this, pretty much all of this laid out. And, and uh, prior to everyone joining, um, Tali or someone had mentioned that it was a, a fairly um, detailed document. And we, our committee um, determined that we wanted it that way. We wanted to be able to ensure that we had a very clear understanding of what was happening with regard to timeframe uh, with regard to responsibilities and with regard to um, project steps. And 
And that's the reason um, that it is as detailed as it as you see, because we put a lot of information into this and asked Dr. Vernal to put it into her memo of understanding, which she did. Now, I um, made an error um, in that uh, this document, and we'll go through the whole torturous background, but this document um, includes the words um, uh, fundraise for public programming. And uh, it is it was a miss on my part. And uh, I know because we had conversation during live uh, meetings a, a couple different times that uh, we would not be fundraising the way people think of fundraising. We would be identifying sponsors and trying to get you know additional funds from um, uh, public donors or basically we had companies and other um, entities in mind. We never had the intention that we would uh, uh, be doing anything from citizens or anything like that. Uh, but in any case, this went out and it still has public programming, fundraising, and that is apparently something that we need to fix and change. We also got feedback from David, thank you, that if we are um, uh, including information here about a budget, we really should be including uh, information for something that was um, perhaps more closely aligned with what we may actually decide uh, we need. And um, my intention initially was to lay out what things cost, recognizing that we are not even going to begin the planning until um, we only we start in June to start thinking about what we actually have and who else we still need to speak with. And um, the exhibition will probably not occur until sometime in 2024. So um, in any case, it is um, been brought to my attention that we need to use some other language for the fundraising piece. And we also should consider and vote on um, what else we should put in here with regard to budget so that the um, when we send this to the mayor and it goes to the council, it is clearer than we have, um, than it is as a standalone document of what we actually intend. So I'm gonna stop there and um, I've talked a lot. Uh, and see what your responses are. I think if we change the word fundraising to sponsorships, that would kind of cover it, wouldn't it? We're talking about corporate sponsors primarily. We are, <clears throat> so, or some version of organization. I mean, it's potent potentially possible that we might get something from um, a church, we could apply for a grant. There are lots of, there are ways of, mm -hmm. of uh, raising the funds that we need. Right. Um, Can we use the word donations? We could use the words donations, grants or donations. Yeah, I think someone had asked what happens if somebody's at the exhibit and they take out their wallet or their checkbook and say, right. I want to give you a hundred dollars or whatever, <laughs> who's going to receive that money? <laughs> right. And we had spoken about that and we don't think that we could accept it. And I don't know. And that's right, David. I, I, I had forgotten about that because we went down a bit of a rabbit hole on that one. And I don't think we ever resolved it. I think we said we needed India India um, and or town manager and or attorney, somebody else. And honestly, I kept going because in my mind, that possibility um, was not happening right now. And we probably had some time to deal with our immediate in information that we needed and resolve that somewhere um, down the line. And in doing so, I left the word fundraising in this document. So. Um, 
So, so seeking uh, sponsorship and donations. And could we if, say something if, like if that? If legal, Donna, if legal says we can't do that, maybe we can ask them if there's a third party we can partner with that can take in funds and donations that would benefit this initiative. I'm not sure we can get around that way, but Meredith, go ahead. Um, and thank you, Donna, you're very gracious. Um, I think that a couple of things, um, when this document and this thought process was um, initiated, um, we did not have the official um, oversight of um, the ask from India. Um, and, the, and you know, us having a solid budget recommendation. Right. We still right. don't have a, we only have a executive recommendation from um, the community engagement and public relations specialist. So now that we have, it has been formalized that this was the recommendation of, of the budget for our committee. Um, and that, that budget and that funding would be held under the governance of the community engagement public relations specialist, I mean, department. I think that all anything that is collected on behalf of this project would go to that department because they're the, the, the monetary stakeholders of any finances. That being said, I don't think that now that we have the 4295, um, being recommend 4250 being recommended to the council as a sitting budget. Um, and if it's approved, then would it be appropriate to say, and in addition to, we're going to ask for grants? Um, I think that that would be, I think though these questions are something that I know I don't have the, the expertise for um, in the governance the governing knowledge. I don't know, Brian, if you are able to weigh in on this conversation because it's something that um, I have, I'm really pretty concerned um, and in the fiscal climate of the town, don't wanna really kind of do anything to turn people off. Um, and they say, for what, what are we? Cause everybody's questioning finances now, so. Um, yeah, well, let's remember that um, you know, the budget number we have in is for the entire, the entire fiscal year. Yeah. So that's going to run from, from July 1st to June 30th. Um, so I don't know that you want to take that, that entire amount and, and put it into one project. Um, I think that's more for, for, for events. Um, operating, yep. uh, yeah, for operating events. Um, as, as it relates to, you know, the funding for, for a project like this, um, I think this, I, I this goes back to the conversation I think that we had with Donna a few months ago um, is we, we still really do need to figure out how as a town that we can take that that money in because I don't think we can um, I don't think we can take donations in um, from a town standpoint um, again, that's so not, can that's I not, stop you Brian yeah can I just stop you for a moment yeah because I, it, I'm um uh, recognizing that I need really very specific clarity on some of these things because it's all, this is all money to me. So mm -hmm. when you're talking about donations now, and David mentioned the conversation we had with Fiona at one point from her experience that people who may attend an event and exhibit may want to make a donation. That's something that comes from a person, but do you, are you also saying that we may not be able to take a business donation if we went, because that was what our, at least from a conversational standpoint, that's what our thought process had been early in the game is that we would go out with our little package of here's what we're doing, go to a church, go to a business, go, you know, work it through at the time we knew India was beginning to get up into her role. So Ensure there was coordination, but probably do the legwork, and then we just didn't know where the money would go. So, are you so, saying that we we can't really even do that part? That, no, no. I, I and I I don't know the I don't know that answer. What what I do know is that we wouldn't be able to just kind of put that money into say this humanities budget that that we that the town manager is presenting. So I would still need to get some clarity for you on yep. on donations and if there's a separate account or fund that um 
that uh, that we as the town can can put together for for donations. So I I wouldn't say, and I know there has to be, I know there has to be something because I I I mean I know if you go to the social youth services site, I believe they have a PayPal link that you can donate to them. So um, I just need to to I just need to get a, a little bit of clarity for you guys, which which I can do. Um, I just what I don't think is is that it it's as simple as just taking that money and saying okay now that you guys have a budget line us putting that money in that budget. I think it just needs to be separated out a little differently. Um, thank you, Brian. And so for my, you know, and this is what um, Don and I have um, turned round and around with because I'm a municipal, I'm a municipal state worker and we don't touch money, period. Mm -hmm. um, we don't, we, if it's not a voucher, we don't touch cash. Um, everything is, is, you know, and, and it, and even in, in certain um, other organizations that we've had um, cash flow, you needed to, if you were an officer, you had to be bonded to be able to um, touch money. That being said, um, didn't know, and, and I was clear that, that first of all, we can't do any public, public fundraising as a committee without approval and oversight approval from town council and some type of executive functioning oversight because we don't have any fiscal um, authorization and or um, accountability. Um, and so that is what I offer to Donna, but that was just from a, you know, being a municipal employee, employee and things of that nature. So I think that for us to really, and then in addition to that, was thinking that all of this had to be approved by uh, the mayor, um, as it relates to any fiscal inquiries and or I think we said the, the, the attorney first. Um, I think that's what we said, the attorney or the. No, I think we said I, because Barbara raised a point about the attorney costing, you know, money oh, yep, to yep, review sure anything. Did. Right. And so if we sent it to India, she would send it to the town council, I mean, uh, the town manager or the mayor or somehow, Brian, in your world, you'd figure out the right way to, to uh, shepherd it wherever it mm -hmm. needed to go. Um, yeah, um, I mean, I, I think that's, I mean, I think that's the, the right way to do it um, is really just kind of let, let some of the higher ups know, yeah. first of all, what, what it is that you guys are trying to do. Um, yeah. and, uh, and, and kind of get their, get their opinion. Cause they're, they're the ones that make the decisions. And, and I also hey, just want to, I I'm sorry, Mary, I, I just want to make the point that my understanding, I mean, if the, if the town was able to provide us with funding in whatever way, that'd be great. But honestly, we were not counting on that. And the reason we weren't is because we could read the tea leaves even before this budgeting session. Um, and I think, Meredith, if I correct me if I'm wrong, but some of what you were putting into the budget was possibly for other kinds of events because we do want to do other things. Um, you know, the the um, Black History Month was going to be an event, an open, everybody come in, we'll feed you. You know, there were other things that we were trying to do. Mosaic, we don't want it to take the all of the oxygen out of this committee. It is a big, it's a big lift, but um, I, at least my understanding from uh, conversations that we had informally was that we would probably try to fund it differently. Um, well, I think we had the conversations before we even had, we actually had the conversations before we even had the budget because I added that those figures into the budget, into okay. what I sent to, um, the, into to I don't know if it made rate. the cut, but um, because at the time we didn't even, we didn't know there was a possibility of a budget. But in addition to that, um, I think what this committee today needs to, to, to really kind of decide on is, A, are we, do we, um, there, are, there are different schools of thoughts as it relates to, should the town be, um, this is a, the only, piece of this project that would need funding would be the exhibition. Um, and it since it is a town wide exhibition for the town, then the town, some schools of thought suggest that the town should be 
paying for it. Um, and um, and I don't I won't say what some I'll say one person um, school of thought and and I um, so so that that's one thought process to consider when Donna raises this vote. Um, but I I'm just hoping that when we when we do review this memorandum of understanding and conclude it as an official document that we have all reviewed and executed, that we be clear that um, if you say you're gonna do something, you need to be prepared to do it. Um, and I don't think, and I'll be transparent, I don't wanna be dismal, but I don't think we should walk into a ask of fundraising and or sponsorship in a MOU. I don't think that's something that we should memorialize as a task that we're gonna do um, as it relates to our ongoing credibility. Um, and I think that we should do, we should be able to, um, our ask is, or our goal is to execute these exhibitions, this visual exhibition, um, but, and I think that is going, that is our role in the um in this whole project. But we just have to be very careful what we're saying we're gonna do in a memorandum of understanding with other stakeholders. Donna, can I ask you a quick question? So the the, um, the exhibition panels, um yeah. I, I see the cost on there is five thousand. Uh, do we do we own those after yes. the exhibition's yes. over? Okay. Yep. So, you know, I, I, again, I think this is something I brought up to you a couple months ago. Um, you know, if we're talking about things that have a longevity to them, like these yep. panels, um, I think that's I think that's that's a better ask to to the town um, because they they have they have a life to them, um, and you know, really, I mean, again, I'm and I'm not. I'm not the money maker. I can't tell you whether they're going to approve it or they're not going to approve it. Sure. But um, you know, but with I think with the with the right um, with, with the right description of them and and how we could use them past um, even even just the exhibition uh, that we're talking about today, uh, I think that would go a long way into the town's determination of saying is this a good investment or is this not a good investment. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to make a recommendation here then. Um, I put this in here. I thought I was responding to requests, but it may be that the anticipated budget beyond current funding doesn't need to be in here. David raised the point of if, if we are going to share information, maybe we don't want to limit it to 12. That would be the absolute smallest exhibition you might do. Um, Maybe what we do is take out um, under community partner responsibilities, fundraise for public programming. We don't try to call it, figure out donors. We don't try to, we just take it completely out. Right. We take out anticipated budget, that whole section that really was for us to make sure that we felt comfortable, that we understood where the money was coming from and going. And if there was going to be a responsibility for funding any portion of the project that would be from uh, Dr. Vernal or her student or whatever, that we understood that up front, because we always had these numbers of 7,500, 5,000, whatever, floating around, and we, and we wanted to really nail down what is it that that means. So if that comes out of the MOU, and we don't have to do this, but I'm just suggesting in order to avoid confusing, confusion and then under outstanding items, um, we don't put fundraising, we put uh, funding uh, for exhibition. No, okay. I mean, I think that you need to have a anticipated- budget. But you want the budget. In there, yes, okay. I don't, I don't, why, why does it have to be beyond current funding? It's beyond current funding because it is not, because this MOU is essentially, it is an agreement with us, but it's also what 
Fiona was required to do with Connecticut Humanities. And we are not getting funding from Connecticut Humanities for our exhibition. We are getting, she's getting the funding. And that's the other thing that everybody needs to understand. When we first started talking about this, and even until uh, the very end of December, we did not know that she was going to get this grant. And so her ability to work with us was very unclear. But at this stage, she has Connecticut Humanities funding. It funds all the materials that she is putting together for our use for this. It includes you know, X number of brochures, et cetera. Uh, but our exhibition is on us. And we can always decide that we're doing the exhibition. We can decide that we're not doing the exhibition because collecting these oral histories is in and of itself a community of community value. And the Wittenberry Historical Society will do public programming with panels or what have you with the library or they have other ways of conveying and using the information. So, so why, why can't it just be anticipated budget for visual expedition and, and take out beyond current budget funding? That's fine. And then- um, It's just that it's not, she's not funding that. Right, but I mean, she's not, I just think it should be anticipated budget for exhibitions. We know that the exhibition wasn't, or do we know? I mean, the other towns had panels. That's what, what drew us to it. That's right. Um, and that's what we want. Originally, when we first got started, that's what we wanted. Right. It was the panels. It wasn't the, it was a combination of both. So, but I you do the oral alone. history. I mean, you do the oral histories to get to the panels. That exactly. was exactly. So I will leave that alone. I'm going to leave that alone. But as soon know. as, as soon as Wittenberry Historical Society got in, because we didn't, we didn't make any kind of an agreement. Then it became a much larger thing yeah, but it that still we could took, do. Took, oh, so it seems that we have two organ. We have we had a, still a project that was oral histories and panels, and then we had a, another organization who said, "Hey, we'd like to do the oral histories," which kind of took some of the weight off of. Fiona, because she was yes. able to train a plethora of trainers to do what she did by herself. Right. But then the panels, and, and so now it's like, oh, and the panels you guys pay for, which is fine. However, um, I just think we should just say anticipated but budget for exhibition panels, for exhibition. I mean, beyond current, we don't, we're not, we're not at the table with the funding source. So to say beyond funding, we know that she's not funding it, but I just think that's too picky hoon if this is going out to various people that we don't, I, I, what, what, what is, what is being, not being funded is the exhibition. So I just think it should be clear and transparent, um, anticipated budget, budget for pan for exhibition. And of yes. course, and, and please everyone, um, um, Donna and I have spoke about this ad nauseum. So we really would like your weigh in on it um i think i think what meredith said makes a lot of sense i think it needs to be included in the mou and so that we can you know put it out there because and i didn't realize that um actually i didn't realize how much of um fiona's money what that was going to cover as opposed to what we needed to to kick in but we definitely want to do or i definitely would like to see an exhibition that is exactly what the power of, of this was about, was to reflect the community back to itself by image and word in, that, in those exhibitions. And as um, Brian brought out, we will own them for the rest of eternity. Right. They're easy to store. They can be pulled out by all sorts of different organizations. So I think I really want to make sure that we aim to have an exhibition that will continue to serve our community for many, many decades. I think it would be a really good sell to the council, as Brian said, if we're actually getting something that is of value and is gonna be stored carefully and used. So um, I think we, we wanna keep it a little bit vague, like Meredith said, but we need to put it right in there as a line item in this MOU because otherwise 
um, I think it will look weird and be misleading and be more confusing. So if we say anticipated budget for exhibition, no one's concerned that this means that she's funding this. I, I'm just concerned that we don't make this correction and send it back and 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 hear that it's um I guess we just put under our community partner responsibilities uh well we you put, might we we could add some language to make it clear that we are taking responsibility for that anticipating funding for the exhibition. And I, so I don't I don't I don't understand but, but that's I, the crux of it. I think that's the crux of Meredith's concern. So that's why I was thinking about taking the whole thing out. So I'm, I, I'm real, is, I really value the conversation because I just don't know what to do. So this is a memorandum of understanding so that we all, and it's not even all because we have, we have, we have uh, Fiona's two organizations and um, the Historical Society. Well, the Historical Society also reviewed it. As we did, guys, we reviewed this. We just, you just didn't see the very final I, piece that went to, we talked about this on, I, I mean, I have a document. It was all sent out. Right. It was, it was the, um, her original was provided. Um, and then I sent out two versions, the one where I made all the changes and the one where the changes were accepted. So that if you didn't want to read all the changes, you could read a clean copy. And that yeah. was sent out before our meeting on the 7th of mm -hmm. February. Right. And, and we talked about on the 7th of February, a variety of different things um, that the, the budget needed to be added in, et cetera, which I added, uh, et cetera. But um, in any case, through so, those reviews, the words fundraising, even though we had talked about how we can't do fundraising, those words were not identified to be pulled out. And so that's why we're having this conversation. Right. So we, so I thought what we got into is we want to drop the word fundraising. Yes. And we want to put in other language. And Meredith suggested other language. It, is that enough to satisfy the needs for a memorandum? I mean, because, of because what is the what are we what are we talking about here? We're talking about, um, we're talking about, Vern, um, Dr. Vernell has already said that we, the, 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 what's not on the page is that if Bloomfield doesn't decide to do the panels, they're not going to get done. So um, as we talk about it even more, as I'm talking about it again, which is, you know, a, every time you have a conversation, it, it changes a little bit in my head as it relates to this was really about the exhibition and it is it, morphed into, but needless to say, I think we should just it, say it, anticipated budget for exhibition. And I don't think that is the, that is the, that is the MOU. That's the, the understanding. These are the, the figures that came from her. We don't know. I mean, really, to be honest with you, a memorandum of understanding really outlines all of the expenses, but I'm not going to be picky hoon like that. And that's just my thought process, but it, we only, it, 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 it puzzles, it's puzzling that only the exhibition and I'm not, and I'm not Donna, please believe me. I'm not saying go back and do this because we did. I saw it and I said, fine, except that fundraising piece, but it's, it's very questionable why we don't know the entire budget. We are entering into a partnership with stakeholders and we don't know the entire budget. We only know the part that we are doing, which is pretty interesting when you're entering into a partnership with someone, you generally know all the expenditures. So just, you know, note about, I don't think we should be, I, I, I feel as if you might be getting, um, a little um, phased about what we're the implication of it all, but we also don't know what expenses are being um, executed formally on this MOU as it relates to this whole project. So I think it's fine for us to just 
put that on there and say anticipated budget for exp uh, um, um, expenditures and take off fundraising by community partner um, and um, leave it at that. So there, it shows up in two places. It shows up in outstanding items. Yep. And it shows up in our responsibilities. Yep. And, and so we take it out of responsibilities and we take it out of outstanding issues. And, 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 and at, then it's asked answer. Okay. I'll try that. Um, I, I, don't, I don't know anybody else. Um, Steve, uh, no, David. Just, and not to belabor this for Donna, but the MOU should protect Dr. Vernell and it should protect us and any other parties that are we're involved with, whether it's the Wintonberry Land Trust, it's just spelling out who's gonna do what and who's responsible for what. Right, um, and if we take out that we have any responsibility for the funding of the exhibition, that is the thing that I'm saying right now, that I think we've taken that out. So we've put a little bit of a budget in, it's not the full budget as David indicated, we're probably going to want to do more than 12 panels, but we're just putting the basic, this is the baseline of what it would cost. Um, and it doesn't say who's going to cover it right so now. It, it, doesn't doesn't, say it doesn't say that the Bloomfield Humanities Committee is responsible for the expenditures related to the panels. Not, not if we take that line of fundraising out. And I was proposing different language, but Meredith's proposal, as I understand it, is to just strike it. So if I were I Dr. Grinnell, I'm not sure I would well, want this to Well, if you strike it, what are you going to, you have to replace it with something or you're leaving right. yourself vulnerable. Right. So, so riddle me this. We entered into a project that has oral histories and the, the expenditures of oral histories, which is what the what wouldn't be a historical society is doing, didn't have a budget because it's under the community humanities grant $250,000 grant but we don't see that it's not in this MOU but it's covered so you see how the we're stakeholders at the table everybody has fiscal responsibilities and some fiscal responsibility is being covered by an overseeing state grant Do, Right. This is between us and Dr. Vernal, and she's saying, this is the way I think about it, and she's saying, here's what I'm providing, and here's what you guys are providing. And, and the fact that there's this other whole thing about how she's providing it, we know she has a grant, but I don't, I don't understand why it's important to spell out all of that. And to me, the piece that needs to be spelled out is the intersection between what she's doing and what we're doing as community partners. Right, but Donna, you're looking at this as someone who is versed in the interactions of it and the engagement of it. Take this and give it to I'm the I'm looking at it as a person who's trying to make it simple as possible and get it done, frankly. Okay, so, mm -hmm. so, give, so, so give it to town council and you have four stakeholders at the table. And there is no budget except this one. So is can language be put in that I mean I'm just I, I, and I don't that know satisfies that. her her Dr. Vernell's expectations of our committee with with this uh, joint you know partnership. Her I mean, what original, did the town of, what did the town of Windsor do? They her? paid her. We're not they paying her. her. Oh, okay. We're not paying her at all. Big difference. Big difference. We are Huge not paying difference. her anything. That is the point. We're not paying her anything. She, she's being so. What's funded her motivation? But, but they paid her to do the panels, correct? And they have panels. They paid her. They paid her to do. I don't know what she. I actually don't know because all we ever asked was how much would this be, and then we said to her. What does, what does, how does it break down? And, and she gets paid through UConn. Previously, she did it, I, I think, she did it previously kind of in her spare time because she's paid by UConn and she did these things because this is part of her interest, her activity, she gets publicity, whatever the motivation might be, right? 
they paid her whatever they paid her. We don't actually even know. But when we asked her how much it cost, that's when we got sometimes 5,000, sometimes 7,500. And when I went back to her and said, we really need to know what's 5,000, what's 7,500. That's when she said, and it's laid out here now. And because we said to her, well, we might have printers. Do we need to use your printers? Could we do our printers? Fine. We might have graphic designers. Fine. So that's why this is an anticipated budget. Once we figure out what um, we want to do with regard to the exhibition, she, what's covered under her grant is the training she's done, the kits she's provided, the fact that ultimately the information all goes to her and she's going to meet with us and we're going to do a review of everything um, with her storyboarding, what the story might be. And then we're going to say we need more of this or more of that. So, the, so it is a collaboration, but we are not paying her because her, and this is new after she got her grant. Right. Uh, but anyway, that that's, I mean, I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, David, you want to say something, please. I think it's important, though, to keep those figures in here because the, we put them in be, because corporate sponsors, if we do approach them, are going to ask us, what is your budget? What right. am I going to get for, right. for my money? And we need to be able to say, well, we think it's going to cost 5000 or whatever, but they're going to want to know. And we can have a range. It doesn't have to be specific. But yeah, I think that all should be in it. So, so right now under anticipated budget, it does say 5,000 covers X, 2,500 covers X and note 12 panels, which is the 5,000 is the minimum size. And we might want additional panels to tell the story. So yeah. that's fine. So it, 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 if I can jump in, I would say yes, thank you. one thing. Um, <clears throat> I would ask for um, what an additional panel would cost. I don't. I don't think that. I, I think you you need to spell out every number because if you because you're going to be signing your name to something. Yeah. You, and you might come. You know, we might exactly. say, okay, you know, we want 13 panels, and she you just oh, can't. Okay, well, the well the 13th panel is going to cost twelve thousand um, dollars. She needs to come out and and at at the at the front part and say what each additional panel would cost. I would also say. From the funding standpoint, it's great that she got funding, but spell out in there what what does the funding, um, what what does it include? Because because when we first talked, we were asked to buy our own recording equipment. We don't have to do that. No, anymore. no, please, please stop. Please um, stop right there, yeah. Donna. Stop but right what? There. <laughs> what? <laughs> because I want to say what 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 happened. Okay, in the early days, Meredith, please. Just allow me this. I am the person in all of this who has all the information. Some people hear bits and pieces. So in the early days, before we knew that she had a grant and we were trying to figure out how we could fund things. And I was asking her how it gets done because my committee was saying, well, she's done this before. How do you do it? And what she said was we oftentimes go to sponsors and they like us to be able to spell out what we need and how much it costs. She had her own equipment. She did not have equipment for other people to do interviews. So she said, you might want to ask for equipment. And so when I met with you and India, we said, we may end up buying some equipment. And that's when India said, well, we are going to do similar kinds of things. Maybe we can buy the equipment. So please let's make sure that this was all a lot of problem solving together to try to figure out how we get to the end point, which is coming to an agreement so that we could get oral histories done so that we could create an exhibit, which is what the mayor asked us to do. And we and and just look at this. I mean, we've spent such an inordinate amount of time, and and this is not but, my intent. But we don't but agree. But it's good for it's good for us to me for everybody to know. And and the mayor didn't ask us to create the visit the, the 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 exhibit. The mayor asked us to work with Fiona 
for Fiona to create the exhibit. And one, 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 one misnomer I think Donna that said is that with Windsor, they paid, they, um, um, a private endow endowment I was told was paid for that exhibit. So when we say she didn't get paid, I don't think she got paid for Windsor either. I think I don't, that her- I her, have no, I said, I don't, please. I said, I don't know what they did. Right. I don't I know. Think that I they, didn't do any research on that. If you right. did, that's great. So I think they walked away with a, a visual as well as Manchester walked away with a visual um, that um, highlighted the exhibit actually. I don't understand, see, and this, this is where I, I'm at a loss. I don't understand the importance of some of these points. I honestly don't. And so well, first, uh, first please of all, tell I think me the, what goes in here so we can get it done. Well, it's, it's a really complicated, it is, it's a legitimately complicated issue. And I get that, that Donna and Meredith have been there from the beginning. Um, and it's gone through a lot of permutations, right? Didn't know yes. about this, didn't know about that. So here we are at this moment in town. And now we're also talking about with um, Brian's help, making the language something that will be clear to the council, you know, as Meredith raised. And then we're also looking for a document that satisfies Fiona. So it seems to me like what we really need to do is to and I don't, I don't have it in front of me, um, unfortunately, because I can't split my screen and, and look at it. But if we can lay out the money, as Brian was saying, try to get as, as specific as we can, so that if the projected costs of the exhibition are five to 7,500, 5,000 to 7,500 for 12 different screens, then, um, and then, you know, with the potential of additional screens at approximately, what would that be? I, you know, 12 and- We can 10. divide it. I mean, she'll, yeah. that's what she'll do. Just she'll divide, divide it, it. Right. Yeah. But just lay it out like that, then I think it will solve um, everybody's needs. But there are a lot of needs. And I really, I appreciate that you all have tried to wrestle this thing through all these different changes. And it's great that we have Wittenberry um, Historical Society, and it's great that this committee is doing it. And but it complicates it, right? Because there are many different things happening. In that case, I think more detail is better, whatever we have, and more transparency is good because then we can, if things need to be adjusted down the pike because prices go up or whatever, we have a baseline from which we started. I just noticed that Lynn has her hand up. Just wanted to say that. Oh, thank you. Um, I was just wondering in terms of clarifying the roles of all the partners, if maybe attached to this, if um, Dr. Vernell would be willing to share her MOU with the grant or her MOU that she has with the Historical Society that would clarify all that. And then it doesn't necessarily need to be put into this, but then everyone can see all the pieces of it um, and kind of see the committee's piece um, in the bigger whole. Lynn, I think that um, Donna's over there stewing it up, but um, I think that um, I will say that, and I and I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna drive out of my lane. I 100% understand Donna's um, maybe perceived um, perception, my, my perceived frustration, um, Donna's frustration because she did not. This is Donna's agreed. I mean, you know overwhelming support to what Fiona gave her a, a couple of bones and she built on it <laughs> because of on our ask. Um, she did do a concentric a concentric circle of engagement with role, um, roles um, and um, all of this all of this um, this creation is Fiona's gift from Donna based on the committee badgering Donna. What about this? And what about this? And what about that? And blah, blah. And you know, the historical society and I, and you know, this is, you know, basically, you know, driving what we're doing the histories and this is what we do and we're doing the histories. And, and I think that we have been the organization to say, hey, we represent the, we're the 
ad hoc committee for the mayor and we have rules, rules and protocols and we speak for the people and we can't violate and blah, 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 blah. And so there has been um, a lot of back and forth where with all due respect um, to speak on Donna's behalf, she's in the sandwich of it all because she has, you know, this, this, this historian, this faculty member um, who has these two nonprofit organizations and the minutia of all the um, um, authorization that has to be perceived, I, I think has been very frustrating for Donna. Um, and so, but she did, there was a concentric circle of engagement that Donna um, unveiled, I wanna say in December, um, if not the January meeting um, that she submitted to all of us. And, you know, basically this is a, a detailed oration of that concentric circle. Um, but unfortunately, and I'm gonna say this, and I know Donna doesn't wanna bring more ills to the table, but I think as a committee, we are, we're transparent about everything um, that the concentric circle was based on us, um, the historical society and um, the project um, creator, which was Fiona. Um, yeah, it was epic. And um, Epoch, and, and now there's another fundraiser. I mean, uh, so so Dr. Fernell is basically bringing the both of the organizations that she works for um, to the table also. And so we don't know their role either. Um, so Tali, I, I, I appreciate everyone's lens who may not be as intimately involved as Donna and David, um, but with a sterile lens could kind of look at this and say, hey, this kind of doesn't maybe jibe in a manner that is marketable for a council. And we know, again, I am going to continue to highlight that, you know, us being the humanities um, committee for the town, we want to make sure that anything we present to the town council is something that they feel that is worthy of support because they have clear and concise understanding of where everything is going. So maybe I'm overthinking it, um, but I think this is a climate where we do need to overthink and anticipate all of the ask that can come come um, before us. So I appreciate Lynn and Brian's um, and Tali's, you know, lens on it and even and, and, and Steve's, uh, Steven's, um, you know, thought process being that he had you know, and countable years of municipal engagement also. So Donna, I hope that um, you take this with the sincerest, um, humble thought process that we, I think we're all on the same page that we want to leave a legacy that is transferable to the generations. Um, but we just wanna make sure that we can have it in a manner that is funded. I think ultimately your task directed. So you basically wanna know what to do and so I don't know if those recommendations that have already been put on the table is sufficient enough. And I know that you wanna turn it around very quickly. And I also wanna know, um, do you see there's any barriers or conflicts that may come out when you represent this to your leadership team in this project? Well, um, because I had the false understanding previously that we had worked through this. Um, I shared it with the Wittenberry Historical Society and we had a call on it with the directors and they approved it. And then I sent it to Fiona and she sent it back on her letterhead. Um, and so what will happen now is once I understand very specifically what the asks are for changes, because I've heard an awful lot of things here, and I don't know that we're putting that we're asking for all of it. For example, are we all in agreement that we want Fiona's memo of understanding with, you know, her whole grant attached to this, and and I'm not sure she'll want to do that. Um, so we're asking, it seems to me we're asking a lot. And so again, I am, I, I can't personally be strategic about this. So I am being very tactical 
and very task oriented. So <clears throat> I'd like to understand specifically what I need to do. And then I will, <clears throat> excuse me, send it back to Wittenberry and send it back to Fiona. So I just, I wanna jump in here and say that the MOU is from what I understand is 98% great. And you've gone to a great effort to really get into the nitty gritty. Yeah, thank you, which Tali, is, which I, I, I appreciate that, but I, I really don't, I, I understand that, that's fine. I don't need, great. I don't but, need that. Right. What so, I do so need it, is to understand what to do. <laughs> well, uh, I so think... the only piece, the only reason I said that was to say that the only, the only line or the only text in the MOU that has been created that it was in question and you brought it up, you know, you at the beginning was that we weren't supposed to use funding in that way, that that was an fundraising, right. right? Fundraising. So right. I'm going back to a, a while ago, it seemed that one of the suggestions that was made was just a really simple statement about, um, you know, anticipated budget for exhibition yep. and that, that we would take responsibility. So I'm just going to go back to that and for the purposes, because I think you, Donna, understand, I'm sure Meredith does too, and David, the purpose of the MOU. And I'm now in this meeting really learning how complicated, you know, the whole process has been. But the purpose is really between Fiona and us, and we'd like it to be readable for the council, but it's really between Fiona and us and Wittenberry Historical Society. Sounds like you've gotten sign-offs from Fiona and the Historical Society, and all we need to do is to change the fundraising piece. Um, and then, so maybe if we could just change that one line of text, <clears throat> you'd be done. So, so anticipated budget for it, exhibition I have. Great. And, and then, I think but, that's all we need to have. I don't think- But I heard, okay, but I heard two other things and that's why I wanna, and, and I'm sorry for being so specific about this. No, great. And making the point, but I heard just take out any reference to fundraising. And I also heard, call it something different. So are we agreeing that we are not, we're just taking out the reference. We're not gonna try to call it anything different. We're not gonna say it's our responsibility. We are just gonna, delete the line because that's what I hear Meredith asking for and I'm not sure everyone else has agreed to that but if you have then I know what to do I I, I just want to be clear on my um thing that uh community partners responsible part um community partners responsibilities include appoint project liaison attend project updates identify narrators collaborate on developing a script conduct interviews review script facilitate sharing digital and um, physical copies, help to develop brochure for the project, identify photographs and take out fundraise for public giving. Just take that out and then move on it. Okay, um, and everyone again, agree, everybody responsibilities, agrees with that. And, and, and I just wanted to liken that to Epochs and, and CHA um, have their responsibilities and they're not saying that we are mm -hmm. um, responsible for, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, they are, they say provide the, uh, uh, 100 brochures to be handed out at the exhibition. Um, but that's it on that part. So I, I think it's fine. No one's basically outlining every fiscal thing that they're doing. So I think it's fine for us to just take that out. Okay. So we're we're not out, I get that we, I get that you're taking out fundraising, but I'm confused because I thought we were going to put in a line about anticipated budget for exhibition as our responsibility. I think that's important to put in there. I, think I don't the think we have to say our responsibility. I think we should just say anticipated budget for exhibition. Right. And Tali, that's why I said I need to know what to do because we do exactly. not have agreement. Well, no, yeah. no, I think we do. I think we do. Yeah, I, mean, I think but, we do. But, I, I think yeah. I think the we're, we're we're talking here about the exhibition, which again we, as as what I'm understanding, we don't have to do these these this is these are that's added correct. costs as long as we do an exhibition, which I'm 100 percent on board doing. Right. Um, yes. You know, I just want to I want to make sure that, and and I 100 percent 
percent think we should be using their graphic designer and, the, and their printer. That five thousand dollars is is peanuts for for twelve of those. Um, I just you know I just I think those numbers are good. I really just would like to just get a monetary a numbered amount on on additional panels. Um, I, I think that's I think that's an easy ask, um, and, and that's really the only thing that that I would say to put in there um, because again the council they're gonna they're just gonna ask they're gonna say two words how much. Um, and, and we just want to have we just want to have a hard a hard dollar amount for them. And, and in addition to that, um, I don't I think that one of the reasons why we were saying um, um, Donna Donna and Steve I think it's how, it, four people went to the exhibition. Um, I only saw it on um, saw it on visual. I haven't seen it in person, but I think people's thought process is that we want it to be a little bit more elaborate with ours. So those are based on the ones that were seen. So maybe someone said, put a range on it and also identify the cost. And you're saying identify the cost of each of them. So I think that's another, uh, you know, consideration, but I just want to say that my thought process conversely to Tali's is I think we should just put anticipated budget for exhibition and we don't have to say it's our responsibility. It's already noted um, what's whose responsibilities above. I don't right. think just because we have a budget there, we have to kick off and say, oh, and that's our, because no one else is, is my point. No right. other fundraiser is saying, no other partner is saying that. So why do we have to jump off and say that? It's another cost that's not in the overall um um, budget, which I think some people who are people who have eyes for this kind of stuff will ask, but again, not to recreate the wheel. Um, I think that, and I do, and I aggressively don't think that um, Dr. Burnell would put the entire thought process in there because I would think that she would say that's not your business. Um, but clearly my thought process is that when you are doing a, co a collaboration, you, you are transparent about everything. Um, but that's not what you wanted to hear. The, the thing is, I think we need to kind of whittle this down to raising a vote because I think we're 10 minutes past time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry that this has taken so long. Um, so, the, so for me to restate, there are two places in this where it says fundraising those two places will be deleted. They will not be replaced with anything. The section that says anticipated budget beyond current funding will now say anticipated budget for exhibition. And then there will be a bullet added that will say additional panels uh, expected to cost X per yes. panel. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Is that... Is that what you wanted, Brian, or were you saying yes. price per panel? Uh, a price, well, I think it would say, yeah. I mean, it would say additional panels may, may be required. And then, you know, each additional panel would cost X amount of dollars. And let me ask this. Why is there a price for a printer? Because we asked her to specify on the $5,000 what is the graphic design, because we, people in our committee said, we may want to use our own graphic designer. We may want to use our own printer. So please ask her how to break down the 5,000, which we did. And so she bro broke it down this way. The printer is the print, it's not a printer, it is the print of the panels. Is what? The printing of the panels. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! So that's a typo. So we better, because it says twelve hundred for printer. Well, we're paying for, for a graphic designer, and we're paying for a printer, someone who print and someone to do graphic design. Right. I think the terminology is not accurate. I understand what you're saying, but just you, looking you rather at it say now. You'd rather it's a printing than printer. Printing, yeah, because printer looks like we're buying a... But well, I then it. I have to say, I suppose graphic design and printing. 
I think uh, those are semantics. I think it's okay. Uh, Dan, I, do I have thought one, so too, I do Brian, have, but it's okay. I do have um, one other question um, that, that I would just be curious on. Um, with these panels, um, do you know, would we be also be able to, would we also own the digital copy of the panel if we wanted to build yes. something on our website? Yes. Okay. Stephen. Yes. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. Sorry. No. Oh, sorry. Steve, you, you actually look like you're speaking, but you've been on mute. So, so you perhaps, I just want to make sure oh, you I'm weren't sorry. talking to us because we didn't hear you. No, <laughs> continue, Donna. Okay, thank you. Okay, I'm finished. I've got, I've got what I need. Thank you. That's great. And I, I'm sorry it, you know, took what it took. Um, but we, you, um, you're, we're not really finished. I think we should formally. No, the men, the, no, the, the memo of understanding, which was. No, right. I don't think we're officially finished until we raise a motion and vote on it. Okay. I, I know that's not, okay. Let's do that. Yes, please. Okay. <laughs> so there you will want? be no window of misunderstanding. So, right. um. Um, Donna, if you want to, if you will, because you are, you have the, the detailed verbiage, so you don't have to pull your hair out to say that we talked about it and everybody heard, we can have it memorialized in the minutes. Um, so um, can you articulate the, the detailed uh, motion and we can get a second and move on our bit merry way? So I, I make a motion that this be accepted by this committee with the following changes. Uh, two places where fundraising is identified in a bullet will be deleted. The section that says anticipated budget beyond current funding will say anticipated budget for exhibition. And we will add a bullet under there, which will say additional PNLs expected to cost X per panel. And uh, I, that's the motion. I yeah. second. I'm going to do converse. Thank you, Stephen. I'm going to do converse order as I do on this virtual platform. All those who are abstaining from this vote, seeing none, all those who vote no, seeing none. Lorraine, you on with us, right? Um, yeah. Okay. So this, um, so the the conclusion is that this um, MOU um, has unanim unanimously passed. Thank you very much. So we will ask for our next steps, um, Donna. So you will, I presume, do the edits and br bring it back to the WHS for and Fiona for review and discussion. And then prior to submitting it to Fiona, our next steps would need to be us bringing it to our liaison to present to the mayor and or um, other official um, officiants to have it um, approved. Okay, so um, if I send it to so I'm not sending it to Fiona until it gets approved. So it will come in draft form and not be on the her letterhead. I think that would be appropriate. And Brian, can you help us strategize on the best steps? Because this is where it gets kind of murky for us. So can you give us your expertise liaison? on the manner in which we should have this officially authorized so Donna could speak in an authorized voice on behalf well, of the I, council? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it it needs to come from you guys to to present this to, to the council. Um, you know, we, we would probably start, it would probably start in, in subcommittee, um, whether it's finance subcommittee or, or admin education. Um, but I, I think the first step is going to be to present to to sub council what the project is, um, what what we're asking for funding from them is, um, and and why it's important. 
Um, and I think, you know, again, I think what, what we're asking for in the grand scheme of things um, for an exhibition is, is very small uh, for something that, that, that has a, it's going to have a really long shelf life. It's going to have a shelf life for as long as um, this committee um, wants to showcase those, 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 those panels. Um, so I have no problem working with y'all to do that. Um, but it's not, it's not my, it's not my ask for the money. It's, it's, it's the ask of, of this committee. Um, yeah. So I think Brian, that. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, part good. of the, the request is not even asking for the money. It's getting the document to the point where, yeah. The, yeah. So, 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 um, so we, we presented to, um, WHS and presented to Donna, I think, um, I mean, Donna, Donna, I think your ask was we presented to Lorraine and draft form with a draft stamp on it and let her know that our next steps will be, um, the collaborate, the, the Bloomfield collaborators presenting it to the town council. So present to Wittenberry, present to Fiona with the draft, and then uh, get it back, and then present to the town. Yes, Council. and that would that would involve that presentation to the town would involve you know us collaborating with um, w, WHS, right? With, you know our strategy with presentation, and I would suggest that maybe Fiona has an, a nice recommendation for one of the. Um, sites that she would um, want us to utilize to display that. I mean, it, you know, it depends on how elaborate you want to present to the council. It could be simple or it could be elaborate. Um, but, and there's a protocol that we have to, um, I think we have to send the agenda to, uh, I don't know, Brian, if it's changed since your role, but we have to send the ask to um, Sharon to get on the council. Uh, Council docket um, to be able to present. So um, let me see. If, let me see if it has to go to subcommittee first. Um, yeah. And if it has to go to subcommittee first, then we'll then it'll go to India. Um, and if it can go right to council, then it'll then well, it might not go to Sharon anymore. Just with with her taking over as acting town manager next week. Um, but we can we can we can talk about that uh, offline, Donna. Okay, great, very good. Can you just describe? Um, just inform us what. Um, going to subcommittee is because that's new language for me. So there, there's there's stuff that um, the town council has has subcommittees. Uh, they have different subcommittees like finance. Um, they have uh, admin education subcommittee. Uh, they have oh, okay, committees. Okay, okay, okay. So yeah, so they have so sometimes they would like they like a lot of the long conversations to go into the into those committees and then they'll come up with uh, with a recommendation that will go to the full council uh, for their vote. Okay, because I know in the past we've just we've gone to uh, we went straight to agenda to be on the agenda and then we present. So um, if that's changed, I'll confirm. Let yeah, us I'll, know. I'll confirm yeah, what, what, know. what okay what they want to do. All right, very good. So we are over over time. I can may may I be afforded? Um, can we be afford so it's 751 can we do and i'm sorry i apologize but i'm so glad donna has direction is it possible that we can just use this last seven minutes just to talk about the black history or should we just wait until april i, I respect everyone's time i know it's a long day um what i i would like to talk about it okay, okay. I think people, people, um, the the majority of the people, there was a, a, a majority of the people. I want to say at least four that suggested that let's move, or maybe three, let's move Black History Month program to June. Um, and um, then someone said they didn't want to wait till June. Um, they thought it was relevant now. I, I would just like to open the, the conversation very quickly with this thought process. Um, June is the, the, you know, the town puts a lot of effort in the last, you know, two years into Juneteenth. Juneteenth is black history. Um, so I think it would be very redundant to say, 
let's have a black history program in Juneteenth when Juneteenth is black history. Um, what I would, what I would suggest is that if we did our event in June, which I'm not opposed to that. And we also have to recognize that June is also pride month and pride is also one of the, um, focal, um, five focal, um, events that we said that we were going to take under our belt, um, putting all that together, um, I would ask that we consider maybe collaborating with the Juneteenth committee, which I think is coming out of the fire, Bloomfield Fire Department to maybe be an extension of their committee by having our program maybe, I think their starts Wednesday, I'm not quite sure, I don't know it off the top and we've gotten the draft scheduling, but to do collaboration with the fire department to say, hey, this was a black history event that we were having back then. We might do and might we encourage you to maybe allow the Bloom, um, Bloomfield Humanities Committee kind of kick off the event with this educational um, component component. Lorraine and I were talking about this at depth um, as it relates to really letting um, the public know what Juneteenth really is. It's it's there are many schools of thought related to Juneteenth and the celebratory process of Juneteenth and schools of thought to suggest that let's not miss what Juneteenth really was. Um, and so with that being said, giving some historical context and, and integrating the stories of the Texians who were misinformed, but integrating that with telling our, 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 our history of success, because certainly people of color have a, a, legend, uh, a legacy of success, even though this, this misinformation came from Juneteenth. So again, just food for thought when we think about when we're gonna have it, but that was just a thought process I had also, but keep in mind, we committed to pride. So I don't want us not to um, keep that on our, our, our our, our focal point also. <clears throat> David? Well, yeah, uh, David looks <laughs> like he's going to speak. Yeah, I just want to say that uh, there is a Black History event coming up in April. On the 26th, the uh, Winton Mary Historical Society is partnering with Prozer Library to sponsor a, a Zoom webinar titled Slavery in Winton Berry, A Story Uncovered. I'm going to be talking about three people who were enslaved in our town, uh, held by the two different members of the Bissell family. So there will be an educational event later in April, at least on, on one aspect of history what it's worth. <laughs> if you're interested, I can send you the link. We, you don't have to endorse it or anything just for your information. David, and just want to not to belabor it, but thank you for being our, our historian and, and really keeping us abreast of so many things that we wouldn't otherwise, I wouldn't otherwise know if you didn't send us those tidbits of information. Um, so thank you so much. I want, we want to give you, well, I would love to give you that official title because you are always giving us more information. It's like wonderful. So just to acknowledge that. Any other thoughts about when we should move this Black History Month program? I have a thought I'd like to share, and that is that, and I don't remember the the dates or the alignment, but someone said there were things in April, there were also things in May. Mm -hmm. I would like to suggest that if Steve and Barbara would agree, because um, the assumption I'm making turned out to be true, and that is that we already have the people schedule. I mean, we have the people, we have to figure out a date. We know exactly what was going to be done. It's a matter of reproducing those plans. I would very much like to see it happen separate from Juneteenth because I believe that it is important enough to stand on its own and that it will get swallowed up. And I think that our activity for June should be pride. And so my hope had been that we could do this 
potentially end of April or May. It's the end of March, so we may not be able to do an end of April, but I would very much like us to have it as an event in May. And that's what I would suggest. I'm fine with that, Donna. Yeah. I just want to see what Barbara has to say. Because we could certainly use the leisure services uh, room again. It's just a matter of advertising it and getting the word out and making sure the speakers are committed to a date at the end of May. So that, that could definitely work. And I would like the idea also. Um, I think that it would be great to actually acknowledge um, Black history as its own event, separate from Juneteenth, it kind of broadens it. And I attended Juneteenth last year, it was fabulous. It's a big event, you know, with the parade and cookout and everything. And I just think our committee's efforts would be a little bit lost there. And it mm -hmm. could be a wonderful event just to do exactly what was planned, but to do it um, as Stephen was just saying, as Steve just said. So yeah, I support that idea too. Yeah, because then it becomes a continuum, which is nice. Right. Mm -hmm. I can certainly contact Barbara tomorrow and see her, you know, hear, feel her out on it and see what her thoughts are and get back to the committee. I don't think, um, I don't think May is a good month for it myself. Um, Why? I, I think that there's a lot of I don't think people are going to be focused on this. I mean, I don't, I think that there's so much change and I think you run into the, the, I think that you're going to run into high school graduation, second weekend of May, they start tapping out. You got to think about two of our people were from the high school. We got the principal mm. and the, and a child from the high school. I think May is a tight month for, academic uh, uh, academic ends, but we can connect with them with related to that, related to that. Um, How about but, the first of June, right? Maybe the first week in June? I, I mean, mean, we, I mean, that, that so I, I have just a few, I guess, questions and or thoughts. Good evening, everyone. Um, I'm just wondering, number one, Dave, with uh, what the library is doing, would it be counterintuitive if we had something also the last weekend in April? If we understand that the people are already in place, um, would that be a challenge for us? That is my first thought. Um, the only other thing I would like to just maybe amend, just knowing that we are in Northeast, uh, Northern climate, Perhaps I, we're always gonna come up against this, I think has been like an ongoing challenge. Perhaps we just consider for the month of February, um, perhaps for next year, engaging in something that's solely online. That way we would not have to worry about um, the transition. Uh, just something that we perhaps we have to consider. I, my personal sentiment is, um, I'm not sure if I personally agree with the thought of celebrating Juneteenth, right? With that being a big mea culpa, um, it's hard to celebrate that when we should really commemorate. Um, and so there's a different tone and uh, I think the events perhaps should be, uh, but I definitely would agree. My only thought and concern is, is just our timing and our ability to meet. We have a lot on our plates. Um, so I think uh, I wouldn't mind if at all possible uh, for us to do it next month, that last weekend in April, but uh, we are already sort of on the doors of April, if that's possible. Um, I agree that if we're looking into May, we're looking into Pride and Juneteenth, and that may be a lot for the group. Um, and, and not only is it a lot for the group, because playing in February was a lot for the group, I thought, but also you want you want your you want your participants, you want the town, and it's a lot going on with the town. So are they going to be? I don't know. Um, um, Steve, maybe you, you want to get back to the, com I don't, do we want, do you well, want to get you back guys to tell You tell me what you want me to do and I'll do it. 
You know, I think I mean, it would be great if we could pull off the, the end of April. And I don't know because I wasn't part of it. And I apologize for my lack of knowledge. But I had thought there was a program that was pretty clearly pulled together. But then this, we got snowed out. So it's not reconfiguring the program. It's more finding if those folks who were going to do it could all be available at the same time, along with the building, along well, with the room. Well, it was also, we, we also... Um, Bless so can I just finish? I was just going to say, um, so So if, if Steve found that out, and if it could be the end of April, I think that would be great, because then you don't run into the problems of May, which uh, Mary's raised, which I think are really valid with school ending and, you know, all that stuff coming down. But it also means that we don't add it to June, along with um, Juneteenth happening and also trying to pull off something for pride. I'm done. <laughs> Thank you, Tally. I don't know if you knew, we, we did incur a, a, a budget with that. We were paying about, I wanna say $600, not us, but um, a community engagement and public relations was sponsoring, our, sponsoring us. Um, so there was fiscal responsibilities attached to that, um, which we were really marketing up um, you know, for decorations and things of that nature. We would also need to go back to that department to see if their, um, you know, fiscal allowance also would be um, available for April also. I can, I can, you know, of course, Brian and Lynn are a part of that department. So, and I can also ask um, India, um, I don't know the status of that department's budget at this point in time with that coming off the table, but they were fiscally support sponsoring us. We would and still it, support you. We would still support you. Yeah. Whatever, whatever we we um, whatever whatever we we said we would do in February, we would we would still do whenever this event would take place. Oh, great. Well, let me ask Barbara and see because she was gonna wasn't she responsible for contacting two of the speakers, Meredith? I think she I think contacted the doctor and the principal, or you were going to talk to the principal. No, I I spoke to everyone except Cindy. Okay. So I can reach out. To, well, I don't want to reach out to them until we have a. We need a date. Firm date. Yeah. Yeah. So we need to find out when that room is available through leisure services. So is that an ask of India? So that's so. So we're saying in four weeks. I, I really don't think it's I I don't think it's I think we are putting ourselves at at. At a yeah, risk. I you know I agree. We'd have to hustle, and then if twelve why, people show up, that's not exactly a success, right? And and you why know? would we why would we hustle for something that in four weeks? Why would we? It's a very it's a wonderful thought process, but why would we go under for it? This is well. The other option is to shelve it until next year, I, or do I, I something in the fall. I could see May better than April if we're going to push it, but four weeks, that's for um, the library's event is the Wednesday. So that would mean that people are going to come out for Wednesday webinar, and then they're going to come out to us on that Friday, that Thursday or that Friday. I think that we have all of our communications ready, right? We just have to relaunch them. I think that the the key piece of this obviously is is getting a date. What if we did the first weekend in May? And, um, but it, but that's not it's we also did a, well I, I know I did a lot of legwork with passing out flies around town. It wasn't that you know you had to do a lot of legwork with this event too. You have to get the word out. Yeah. I was going to other Black History events and passing out flyers, um, which is fine, but we just got to get the word out. Um, so, just for my clarity purposes, clarity, we would be proposing it um, on a day that's not our non-standard meeting. I know the last two years we've tried to have uh, the event the same date that we would usually meet, 
So we'd be looking at a completely different day that would be feasible for everyone. Yes, no, clear. Point, that's a point. So you're talking to Tuesday evening, Lorraine? Uh, you know, that, that would be my initial thought process. You know, okay. if, if we probably did that for the 23rd of May, um, I believe, I believe that's before Memorial Day weekend. Yep, 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 yep. Does anybody have a Bloomfield High School calendar? I think that's the week after they get out of school. They get out that early? We could I'm do sorry. the 23rd. I'm thinking about their graduation. I'm not thinking about when they get out of school. I'm thinking about when the seniors graduate. I'm sorry. Does Want anybody to do the 23rd? The 23rd, is that? I think that, well, that's my first suggestion. I like the 23rd. Anybody that 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 makes me breathe a little bit better. I great. think that's great. Yeah, so let's let's settle on that date. So um Steve, you're gonna talk to your committee and once you give us the yay, the yay or nay, then I will go back to the um to the um, participants and see if they were available, they're available? Yeah. Okay. I'd be happy to help with distributing, uh, distributing uh, flyers and things. Wonderful. So Steve is gonna talk to his committee. Once the committee um, is um, concluded, then we'll go to, Steve, can you go to, um, you can send it back to me and or connect with, uh, yeah, I, I'll, I mean it's a committee Brian. of yeah, it's a committee of two. It's Barbara and I. So yeah. once <laughs> once I have coffee with her or talk to her tomorrow, I'll email everyone and then we can get um, things rolling because we still need help with leisure services and there's um, equipment in there that we want to use if we want to do this virtual and in person. So if you could just if you if, once you speak to Barbara, if you could send. Uh, I'll spell email. it all out. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then okay. Andrea, and or someone for her department can, because she was let our liaison to uh, leisure services and Yvette was able to secure the room. So we can follow that. Yep. that. And the way, the way I write the email is you can share it with any, you know, you can forward yep. it on to whoever sure. needs to see it. So wonderful. Um, yeah. All and right. hopefully every, if everyone on this um, committee wants it, I'll, I'll put everyone on it too. Or yes, CC please. please put everyone on it so everybody yes. can take a grab Perfect. a task if they want to. Yep. And all right. we'll, shoot, we'll shoot for May 23rd and keep our fingers crossed and see if all the panelists are available. Wonderful. And certainly, um, Dave, as you are one of the um, contributors to the um, April 26th event, um, we're hoping that you can also announce it at that event also. Mm. Sure. Yeah, because right, that's almost wonderful. a month out. That'd be great, David. Thank you. Yes. And, and it's also very good. I always, I always think that it's great um, community get engagement and, and, and fellowship for if you want people to come to your event, you got to go to their events also. So hopefully all of those who are able to go to the WHS um, Prosser Library um, work webinar, if you could go, that would be great. All right, this, I will never, ever hold this no, that's not true. I'm not even tell that lie. But 42 minutes over time. Thank you. It just shows your diligence and your patience on um, how you're committed to this committee. And, you know, ever so often I have forgotten during this um, communication that this is being live and streamed. Um, so that that's a, another issue. But um, thank you so much. Thank you all for your tireless work. It makes us feel so good that we have participants on this phone that are um, able and willing to um, do this work. So thank you. We're going to, we're going to be the glistening, the glistening sunshine um, in Bloomfield. So thank you so much. And we will see you um, next month. 
Okay. Good night, everybody.